Well, welcome to another video. Today we're doing orecchiette bolognese. It's a little pasta that's got the shape of an ears. Orecchiette bolognese. You can make it with any pasta you want. The secret is the bolognese sauce. We're gonna make this amazing sauce, I promise you. Remember, click on subscribe and click on the bell so you can hear when we produce another video. And if you like the video, it gives us a thumbs up. So this is a very, very simple recipe today. I'm using a spicy Italian sausage. You can use beef, you can use pork, you can use chicken, you can use tofu for that matter. I make a beautiful bolognese with tofu. Um, but today we're using a, a spicy Italian sausage. It's really the same principle for all of it. It doesn't matter what it is you do, the secret is to caramelize the meat that you're using, whatever it may be, chicken, beef, it doesn't matter, right? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna saute some onion. While the onion is sauteing over there, right there, I'm gonna do the, uh, I'm gonna saute the sausage. And I'm gonna show you because, here you go, put a lot of onion in there, don't worry. The onion is wonderful, okay? And uh, we're gonna caramelize them, we're gonna let them do their thing. And, uh, and then we're going to do the sausage. And the sausage, you get it normally when you get a sausage. It comes in, in a, um, with a casing like that. You want to remove the casing. The easiest way to remove the casing is simple. Eh? You cut it on one side. Then you flip the sausage on the other side. And you, yank, you, you put it right out. You see? Look, it comes right out. You see? Right there, it comes right out. Then, let me tell you the secret, friends. It really, really is important is to caramelize that meat to create the mala reaction really, really well. And I see a lot of people making bolognese sauce uh, and, 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 and they don't take the time to caramelize it. It's kind of like, imagine if you took a steak and you boil it in boiling water to cook it. You have to cook, but you're going to miss the opportunity to grill it, to get that caramelization or to saute it in a pan and to get all those beautiful reactions. So it's really important. So we take that sausage. And you're going to see, it's going to take a little while. But this is a must. That's why I wanted to do it in front of you because it's really, really important to take the time to do this. And that's why I wanted to show you from the beginning of making the sauce. And even if it takes a little while, it's important that I explain it to you. Because if you don't do this, you're missing a great opportunity. Just, I can't describe it better to you than if you took a steak and, and you boiled it to cook it. Okay, instead of grilling it, and look what I'm going to do. You see right there? Now, this is a very time-consuming process, okay, but you must do it. This is really the secret of making a fabulous bolognese, okay? It really is. It's like, uh, it, it really is amazing. Wait until you see it. Wait until you test it. Wait until you test it. It's really amazing. You got to take the time to do this. It doesn't matter if it's a beef or a pork, or a chicken, you got to saute it. You see right there? And you'll see it, how far I'm going to take it. Now, depends the sausage you're buying, it's going to be very lean, and depends the sausage you're going to buy, it's going to be very fatty. So, if you want to make it with sausage, you're going to have to watch it to make sure you buy sausage, it's not too fatty. If you're going to use a... Um, a chicken, same deal, you know, or same beef. For the beef, I buy uh, 85 15 on a ground beef when I make a bolognese. Eh? So it's not very fatty. Eh? And you see, I'm taking my time to do this, and I'm going to saute the onion at the same time. And I really want to do it to show you because nobody takes the time to do this, to show you how to do this. And uh, so it makes it for a longer video, but it's worth it to show you how to do it. We got some thyme, then we're gonna put in later. I don't wanna forget it. We're gonna cut some mushrooms. When I get mushrooms, if they're big like this, what I do is I cut them in half, and then I cut them like this. Okay, cut them in half, and then cut them like this. See, look, half, right there, you see? Cut them like this, just like that. Don't cut your fingers now. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, I say that and you watch, I'm going to cut my fingers. <laughs> you know, I've been a professional chef my whole life. And I've been very lucky to cut myself very, very, very few times. Knife is something I really respect. <laughs> I have to be very, very careful, let me tell you. You don't want to cut yourself. 
Yo, look, look at this. Look at this. You see how long it's taking, friends? We're not even close. In the meantime, the onyo is, is getting its thing. We're not even close. You see, we're not even close to, uh, to where we want to be. Let me put that spoon right over there. So remember, when you use a knife, be careful. What I do is the knife is, uh, is uh, behind my knuckle. And if I do it slow motion, you see, my knife is always on the knuckle. My knife is always on the knuckle. As long as I feel the cold of the knife, I'm not going to cut myself. The second I don't feel the cold, then I'm in danger zone. I could be over here, I could be somewhere. I have to be careful, you see? Look, it's not complicated, I promise you. All right? So look at this uh, sausage over there going. Mamma mia. It's taking forever. You see? Let me get that spoon again. And you see, we may have too much fat. Oh, they, oh this is what I wanted. I wanted to show you. Let me see. Let's see if we can get to it. This sausage has a lot of fat. Look at this. This is a little too fatty, so I'm going to strain the fat out of there. I don't want all that fat in my uh, bologna, so I'll show you. I have a, uh, a little thing down there. See, shoot. Look, let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me get myself a tong. Hold on one second. I want to show you. Eh? This is what I'm looking for right there, friends. You see right there? This is exactly what I'm looking for right there. That caramelization right there. It's very, very important that we get this. It's very, very important that we get this, friends. You see? Nice caramelization right there. You see? We're getting there, but we want to break it up, break it up, break it up. See? And then you do this. It doesn't matter if you're doing beef or pork or chicken. Huh? You stay ooh, right there, right there. See? Well, you can't see. <laughs> it's going to take a little while longer. We're almost there. And the onion are cooking in the meantime, right? The onion are caramelizing it. You see right there, we want it just a little more brown because that's where all the flavor is going to be. If I miss an opportunity to do it now, it's never going to happen. Now we're going to put the mushrooms. Ooh, let me get my scraper. I always forget something in my kitchen. Eh? There we go. We're going to put the mushroom in here. Let me cut. Let me hurry up. Boy, that's a big one. That's a big mushroom right there, boy. Let me see how we're doing. Hey, you know, I bought a couple of baby portobello. Maybe I'll put some of those too. Put whatever mushroom makes you happy, eh? See? Right Okay, look, 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 look. There you go. Now the onion, nice and caramelized, you see? They're beautiful. Beautiful, 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 the onion. So now we're going to put the mushroom to get rid of the water. We'll put the mushroom to get rid of the water, friends. Okay? You don't have to put mushrooms if you don't want to put mushrooms in your, um, in, in your bolognese. But let me tell you, I really, really think it has a nice, oh, look at them. What are they doing in there? It has a great deal of flavor, eh? The mushroom. Okay, look, look, look. Look, look, this is what I'm talking about, friends. You see right there? That caramelization? Let's get rid of the water in the mushroom, eh? Let's get rid of the water right there. And when you make a bolognese sauce, Make extra. You can do so many things with a good bolognese. So many, many, many things, friends. Look at this. Look at this. You see? Now, a lot of fat in here, right? You notice that? Okay. So, look. This is the color I'm looking for right there. You can see it? This is what I want. If you could smell it, it smells beautiful. So, look. Here's what I'm going to do, friends. I got it figured out here. I wanted to show you what happens is if you got too much fat. This right here, this is a little too much fat. So, I don't want all that fat. So, you know what I do? Look. Look what I do. See, sometimes you got to be careful. Last time I bought the sausage from this place, it was beautiful. It was not too fatty, but look at now. So, you know what? I'm going to do, friends, I'm going to move over here because now we're done. Okay, let's get rid of all the water in the mushroom. You see right there? This is what I'm doing. Look, look how beautiful the color is. You see right there? If you could smell it, you'll understand what it is I'm talking about. But this is really, really, really important. You see, friends? Look at this. Right there. So you see, look. Look at all that fat. We don't want that fat right there. See? I'm not interested in that fat. So let me get rid of the... A uh, little bit is okay. I don't mind a little bit of fat, okay? But too much fat is not very good. So look. Right there, we're getting rid of all the... 
water in a mushroom. Saute them a little bit longer. Let's make sure I got the good heat on there. There you go. Right? And then we're going to put fresh thyme. Just pick the leaf of the thyme, just like this. You see, look. Look how simple that is to do. Right? Um, and then we're going to put some garlic. We've got to put garlic and not tomato sauce, for sure. So you can have a... Ch I have a chopped garlic things that I do, but since I didn't never show you how to do that, we just do this. See, you take your garlic right there, smack it. Get maybe one more. What do you think? For that batch? Oh, yeah. Right there. Right there. You take it and... Just give it a quick little chop. That's another way to use your knife. Quick, quick, quick. Little chop, chop, chop. <laughs> All right, and we're going to cook this. We're going to put this in here. Right, and remember, the second we smell the garlic, the second we smell the garlic, what do we do? Let me clean up. I hate the dirty curry board. The second we smell the garlic, we put our tomatoes. I'm using Lavalle tomatoes, a peeled Italian tomatoes, and it's absolutely fabulous. So here we go. Chopped tomatoes. Beautiful, chopped tomatoes. We're going to put a sausage right there. We're going to leave all that fat in here. We don't need it, you see? And we are getting close. We're getting close. We're going to see what's happening here with our tomatoes. We're going to put more tomatoes. Mix it up real good. The tomato puree is going to bind the sauce. Maybe two spoons. Mix it all up. We're going to let this cook. About 45 minutes to an hour. The tomatoes are going to release more water. The tomato puree will be there to thicken it. Let me tell you, this with a pasta, I put it inside a uh, uh, Vadalia onion, I put it inside zucchini, I put it inside bell peppers. There is this sauce, you can just serve it plain by itself with a. Um, uh, um, any kind of pasta, you can serve it with rice, you can also add some beans. It's really, really, really fabulous. We're going to put salt and pepper in there. I'm using a Mediterranean sea salt. A little bit of pepper because my sausage is quite spicy, so I'm not putting too much of it. And right there, we're ready. So remember, if you have a sausage a little too fatty, like I had today, get rid of the fat. I mean, if you want to keep the fat on it, of course, you can keep the fat on it. It's your, it's your sauce. Make it however you want to make it. <laughs> But you don't need that extra fat, you know. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean the pot. Remember when I cook, I like to clean my pot. I like to clean the pot. So then it doesn't burn on the side of the pot. It's starting to look good, but it's going to take a while before it really comes through. So it comes to boil. The second it comes to boil, I want you to reduce and cook it very, very slowly. And every so often, I want you to uh, mix it up like I'm doing right now. And then we'll, uh, we'll adjust the seasoning about 45 minutes to an hour from now. It's all going to reduce properly. And uh, this is a, and when you make a sauce like that, you want to make a huge quantity because it'll freeze beautiful. It actually gets better if you freeze it. It really, you refrigerate it, this is wonderful. Easy to make. And uh, we're going to come back and we're going to serve it with uh, orecchiette pasta and uh, parmigiano reggiana. So we cooked it. This is about, uh, about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes today. We cooked a little bit longer. You can cook it. One hour is enough, one hour and a half. You don't need to cook a tomato sauce all day, you know. That's the way they used to do it all day, but I don't know why they did it that way. It's just don't, you don't need to. So the sauce is beautiful. Remember, make extra because you can freeze it, right? I got orecchiette. Orecchiette, little eels. The reason why I like to do orecchiette, friends, is because um, um, they, they hold the sauce. They're perfect. So, so uh, it's like a little pocket, if you will, or a little shell. Because, you know, to me it looks more like a shell. It doesn't look like an ear, you know. But orecchiette means a small ear, right? It, it looks more like, um, like an ear to me. Let me put this over there. I put a little bit of butter in there. And, 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 that's, and like I said, the reason why I like to do 
the um, uh, the orecchiette is because the sauce is going to get right in there. You see, look. Now, of course, you can make it look pretty. Put the pasta on the bottom, and then put the put the sauce on top. But if you really want to enjoy it, friend, this is how you do it. Okay, you can serve any kind of pasta with this. You, you can certainly use uh, uh, a, um, a a penne pasta. It'll be delicious. Also, a spaghetti bolognese is wonderful. Okay. And, um, and if you don't like mushroom, don't put the mushroom. I love the mushroom in there, you know. And this one right there is, is so delicious, it's going to be a little spicy. So all we got to do is we're going to mix it up really well, right? We'll put a bit of Parmigiano-Reggiano on top of it and, uh, and a little bit of parsley, and we're serving it. We're serving it in my, in my favorite plates right there. This is beautiful. This is so simple. Look at this. You see, look, look at that. They're gorgeous. Eh? So nice. Every little pasta has got a little sauce in there right there. All we're going to do now is we're going to take just a little bit of the Parmesan cheese on there. Just a little bit of Parmesan. Or you can put a lot of Parmesan. It's up to you. A little Reggiano now. Make sure it's Reggiano, okay? Look at that. Oh, yeah, baby. It's going to be delicious. And then I'm going to put a touch of little parsley in there. You can put basil chiffonade if you want, just for a little color. And this right there, my friends is absolutely wonderful you go ahead right there and make it because it is beautiful and it's gonna be amazing